Welcome to Link 2022. I am Professor Laurent Pirou from Reims, France. Link is, uh, as usual, a very important meeting, singularly after the COVID problem. So now we will discuss a very important topic, very innovative topic in the field, which is surface modification, surface treatment of flow diverters. We will discuss this, this important question with uh, Professor Marcus Mullenbo from uh, Heidelberg. Uh, Germany. So, uh, Marcus, uh, it's a pleasure to discuss with you this topic. How do you see the uh, surfi surface treatment we can use? Which kind of surface treatment we can use? On which kind of uh, surface treatment is uh, the surface treatment used for, uh, for Fredix? I think the surface treatment is the future of um, the treatment with flow diversion and maybe with other uh, neurointerventional devices as well. So um, the FRET is now available with a so-called X-coating, which is a nanopolymer um, from the Terumo and it has a very long history of more than 30 years of use. So effectively it's a very important topic, I agree with you. So you are reporting a prelim preliminary result of a preliminary ser series of uh, uh, more than 150 patients treated with Fredix. Can you give us the, the first results of this important series? So yes, we collected data from nine different centers in Europe. Uh, so all together we treated uh, 184 aneurysms. In these case series, uh, the rate of uh, permanent deficit was very low, so it was less than 2% and the rate of uh, mortality and that's why and this is because we treated uh, patients in acute stage of SIH as well so here we had a rate of 1.2 uh, percent which is very similar to other uh, registries uh, in which uh, the FRET was used and if we talk about the occlusion rate so here after six to seven months we uh, observed a um, complete occlusion rate in 66 percent um, uh, neck remnant in 17% and uh, aneurysm perfusion in another 17% of the cases. As of now, you don't have all results of the study, you will have additional results. Uh, but what are the next steps for the evaluation of uh, a flow diverter with a surface modification? How do you see the evaluation? We know that it's something important because what we want is to reduce uh, the the, the antiplatelet medications we are uh, giving to the patient, but for that we have to have uh, uh, something very precise, uh, a very precise study to evaluate things and to know if we can do it. So how do you see the future evaluation of uh, uh, flow diverter with your face treatment? Yes, probably uh, two different steps are important. So the first step, if you have a new device, will be like the FRED X. Uh, you need a prospective registry in order to collect uh, the data. Uh, and you do it usually uh, under the regular uh, medication of a dual antiplatelet therapy. But then, of course, you can think about uh, to use the FREDX with a mono anti aggregation. And we do this, uh, especially in ruptured aneurysms, in order to reduce the rate of hemorrhage. And that's possible, at least to our experience. So, this would be the first step. And then, of course, if you have a good signal from this prospective registry, you can think about a randomized controlled trial. Uh, in order to compare uh, the coating versus, for example, non-coating, which is maybe difficult, but this at least would be the proof that um, this surface treatment uh, have, has a potential benefit for the patients. To come back to the results of your series, which is uh, very interesting, uh, some results are very impressive. For example, uh, you use a very, in a very low percentage of cases uh, balloon angioplasty in the flow diverter. So, which is the, the number is three percent, which is very low. In my own experience, probably I use balloon angioplasty in between ten and twenty percent of cases. So, how do you explain this good number somewhere? Because you know, less less uh, manipulation you do, better it is. Yes, no, you are right. The uh, PTA uh, number is quite low, three uh, percent. 
Of course, one reason is all centers, they are very experienced in the use of FRET and FREDX. So this is, of course, one reason. But the other reason is, uh, I think, the ease of use of this device. So usually the opening is quite fine and the need for a PTA to our experience is quite low. So in all the cases, we perform Dynacity uh, afterwards to make sure that the stand is very well opposed to the vessel wall. And the overall rate that we see that the stand is not opposed to the vessel wall is, is quite low. So, and uh, in our own series, the rate of PTA is less than 10%, I think even less than 5% for, for the uh, use of FRET. Thank you for this very interesting answer. So to conclude maybe, how do you see the future finally of uh, a flow diverter with surface treatment uh, as long as uh, their efficacy is demonstrated on if, if for example we can use them under single antiplatelet treatment? Do you think it will be it will change uh, dramatically uh, the treatment of intracranial aneurysm at least by endovascular means or do you think okay it will change but it's not so important? No, I think uh, surface treatment of flow diversion will have a tremendous impact if you are able to show the benefit for the patient. We all know that the rate of uh, uh, thromboembolic complication, for example, is already quite low compared to uncoated devices. But let's say if you have a device with a surface treatment and you are able to show that the complication rate is even lower, so then, of course, there is no reason why we should not use this device. So therefore, I think this will have a major impact and probably this will uh, have an impact of, uh, on other treatment uh, strategies as well, because then, of course, the rate of uh, the overall thromboembolic complication could be lower, for example, to uh, coiling procedures or maybe uh, stent-assisted coiling as well. But this is, of course, what we do not know so far, but it has a definitely a major potential. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Mollenbrook. Thank you, Marcus. Very good, uh, very good points. Thank you. <laughs>